So guys, Derek from policemoreleads.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Leon uh, Goritska. This guy, <laughs> a bunch of you guys have been sending me messages to cover this guy. Um, I guess he had a recent body transformation and it's another uh, football player that um, is uh, highly suspicious in terms of his uh, before and afters are quite substantial. And I'm just getting fucking blown up in my chest right now to cover this guy. So you guys get what you asked for and let's get into this guy. So one of the main comparison pictures used is obviously his progression from the start of his career, 2013, all the way up to 2019, where this guy has pretty much looked like a rail, you know, like a skinny soccer player. This guy has never been muscle bound whatsoever. And then all of a sudden in 2020, this guy looks cranked. Now it's this picture in particular, he looks extra impressive however there are other shots of him where he looks very good too and this is kind of what we're going to be getting into this isn't like a photoshopped image where it's like a one-off like even if this was enhanced to some extent you can actually see the footage of him in the same celebration and compared to what he looked like before you can see his physique and he's obviously lean as hell and is more muscle bound by a significant amount. He's got mass on his back, his traps, his visible abs, he's got the serratus popping. This guy looks uh, a lot bigger than he was. We're going to dig into some of his progress though first from start to finish. This was a video put up by I Seem Kenny or something. I don't know, but I want to give him credit because he compiled this and it was posted uh, yesterday. So this is uh, Leon in 2013. So as you can see here, Nothing impressive. He is just a uh, skinny guy. I guess in 2013, that would make him about uh, seven years ago. So he's about 18 years old here. I believe he is 25 years old right now. So you have to consider this guy's fully done puberty. It's not like we're looking at some guy who's 14 years old and is going through a growth spurt and then suddenly gets jacked as hell. Rather, he's kind of done growing. This is all the way to 2018. This is what he's looked like after five years. Can keep in mind, this is five years of heavy duty soccer. And this guy's been training his ass off for this many years. Here he is in 2018 as well. And he looks, you know, like borderline skinny fat here. Now he's not actually fat, but you know what I mean. He's not, he's not muscle bound by any means. And continuing throughout 2018, uh, he's more or less looked the same. And, you know, for the duration of his career, his physique really hasn't changed. This is what he looked like in 2018 again. Here's him playing some volleyball, 2018. 2018, nothing special. He's got some tone, but he doesn't have the muscle he is sporting. Now in 2020, looking like a fitness model almost. If we keep going, we can see some more shots of him coming off the field. Um, this is, you know, more or less what he's looked like for over half a decade straight. So you have to keep in mind, it's not like some guy, you know, had just started training. This is somebody who's been training his ass off for years. In July 2018, he moved to Bayern. And here, does his physique look any different to you? No, it doesn't. To me, it looks exactly the same. There's been no progression whatsoever. And you have to consider, too, these are the years this guy is gunning to get to the top. Like, he's not going to not be in the gym. Like, one of the things that a lot of people are going to... Uh, divert to is the fact that oh maybe he just like started taking up weight training seriously in the past you know few months and all of a sudden that's why he's transformed his physique this guy has been gunning for the top spots for years when you are just coming up you're not going to take it easier you're going to do whatever you can to get in as good of shape as possible and here he is training with james harden in 2019 and again has there been any substantial progress made despite him being in the gym not really he's still uh you know he's still athletic and looks in shape but it's nothing like he is now if we go look at like one of the things i thought that might be the case as his injuries because if you go look at his history this guy's been injured like perpetually <laughs> throughout his career in 2014 2015 thigh injury um, 2015 and 2016, several injuries, 2017 to 2018, stress reaction in bones in his lower leg, and that injury kept him out of action for over two months. Goretzka did not appear in the match as he was out injured. 
like he's been injured quite a bit. So, you know, some people might argue that, oh, you know, he's finally just recovered and is able to make progress again. But to be honest, man, like the amount of time he's had to train throughout the duration of his career and the fact that his physique hasn't really fluctuated whatsoever, you know, it's really, really suspect. I mean, get back to his transformation here. He is in 2020, real training started in 2020. And all of a sudden he's starting to pack on a little bit of mass here and there. And you can start to see all of a sudden this guy is... uh his six pack starting to pop out. He's got some cap on his delt. He's got a bit of chest popping. He's got uh, a bit more meat on his arms. This guy's starting to look like a fitness model, despite the fact that for like over seven years prior, he's looked like a very, very skinny football player. I know a lot of people get pissed when you say soccer. Yes, he plays football. I get that. Here he is sprinting. Guy looks good. Um, and the progress here he is boxing, July 2020, more recent. And all of a sudden, this guy's looking like he could be a fucking model for Armani. He's <laughs> got a sick physique. And then at the end, he's uh, his teammates are like pulling up the sleeve to show his biceps. Like this guy at the end, August 2020, this is the shot everyone is looking to and everyone is asking, is this guy natty or not? And you can see him. Indeed, it wasn't just a Photoshop picture. And even if it was, when you go through the celebration, you get shots of him where he looks, you know, you can see it's not just overly exaggerated. The guy's clearly holding like 10 to 15 pounds more muscle than he has been in the years prior. He's got mass on his back that he never had. He has mass on his arms and his chest. And the most important thing about it is he's maintained the same level of body fat or gotten leaner during the process. This guy has way deeper ab cuts than he ever has. In fact, he's never had ab cuts in the past. And now all of a sudden, this guy has a visible six pack. He's got a slicey fucking serratus and he's got mass on his upper back arms <laughs> just everywhere. This guy looks much better than he used to. And we can see a substantial amount of progress and it's almost purely lean tissue. So anyways... Going through, there's a lot of articles about this guy and a lot of hype behind his uh, transformation. Ripped, Leon Goretzka rivals Robert Lewandowski as Bayern Munich's muscle man as midfielder is pictured looking shredded with Champions League trophy. Not only has the Bayern Munich ace emerged as one of the best box-to-box -box midfielders in the world, he's also gone through an extraordinary body transformation. So he went from a scrawny mid midfielder to an absolute rock of a box-to-box -box player after making the switch from Schalke to Bayern in 2018. Goretzka cut a scrawny finger in the middle of the park and struggled for consistency in his early days, blah, blah, blah. Monday, Bayern posted a picture of their midfielder posing topless with the trophy, leading many fans to wonder what the European champions have been feeding him, with exclamation mark. Goretzka used the enforced absence to pile on the muscle. It is understood the 25-year-old piled on the muscle during lockdown and even earned the attention of his former Schalke teammate, Roman I'm gonna fucking murder this name. New Stutterer. New Stutterer. Who was desperate to learn his secrets. N whatever his name is, told the son. After I've seen his development, I wrote to him directly to send me the exercises he was doing! Exclamation mark. Even at Shulk, we saw that he has the physical abilities to build muscle mass without harming his game. Really? I have not seen evidence of him having the ability to build muscle mass throughout the duration of his career, to be honest. And from all the way to 2013 to 2018 to 2019, I have not seen any evidence of this whatsoever. So that is a bit of a suspect statement, in my opinion. Continuing on, of course, he made the best possible use of the coronavirus break. And I agree. You can't just decide for yourself. So I'm going to gain a few pounds of muscle mass. You're right. You can't. This guy has packed on what appears to be perhaps in the double digits dude like this guy is packed on a fuck ton of size let's get into one of the next articles hulking leon goretzka shows up bulky bulging biceps and ripped body as Bayern munich star holds champions league trophy do you think he's been working out question mark i don't know man it's a good fucking question his bulging biceps were on show for all to see along with his chiseled ab <laughs> it's chiseled abdomen not ab not with his abs his chiseled abdomen can you imagine stepping on a bodybuilding stage and you're getting reviewed and critiqued by the judges? Look at that chiseled abdomen, guys. Goretzka piled on the muscle during a lockdown, and Sunsport previously took a look at his impressive transformation. Look at this shit. Looks like Leon Goretzka took whatever they gave the Captain America Super Soldier Serum. This is a substantial before and after. Granted, he's flexing in the second picture, and this is a flattering angle, but it's like unrecognizable. Is this even the same fucking dude? Here he is again. Is a beast. Look at his shot, dude. Look at the ab cuts. Did he look like this in any shot in 2018? The abs are 
much blurrier, and he's holding probably 15 pounds less size. So it's not like this guy's massive. Like, let's not, you know, discount the fact that some of these are angles. Some of it is just the way he's flexing. Some of it is, um, you know, good lighting. Like when you see him with a shirt on, it's not like this is some substantial, massive bodybuilder dude who you would think this is unachievable naturally. <laughs> Goretzka looked absolutely enormous next to N Nabry. I wouldn't say enormous. This guy's just fucking tall. Like how, what's, how tall is this guy? Let's see his statistics. Height, weight, and age. I looked up a few different sites. Uh, this roughly, he's six foot two and a half to six foot three, apparently, and seventy six kilograms. At twenty five years old, seventy six kilograms. I'm assuming is an old statistic, though. If you plug that in, that's only one hundred sixty seven point five pounds. Like, there's no way this guy weighs one hundred sixty seven point five pounds. Still, like, this guy's in the one eighties at this point. Like, he's six foot two and a half. Keep that in mind. So he's packed on a decent amount of mass. Like, we can see it plain as day. Um, and his transformation is uh, not going unnoticed. And here he is sitting here at dinner looking like a uh, got a bit of mass in the arm. He's got the tight uh, long sleeve going. His accessories are fucking on point. His nice little hat here. This looks like a real Euro shot to me. This looks like a nice time. The comparisons too. This shot is him in February versus July in a similar long sleeve with a similar hat. This is of 2022. Like, this is not last year. This is, like, a few months ago. And this is what he looks like now. Now, he's not fucking massive, like I said. This guy's not a bodybuilder. First comment at liver Super Bowl steroids. Not at all. Looks like, uh, let's see, blah, 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 blah. It's not like he had much else to do from February to June. Nice hat. Or new hat, nice. Amazing transformation. <laughs> At Greg Doucette, what do you think about this guy, Natty or not? Lots of other photos of his training transformation over lockdown. So funny, literally no one can even have a body transformation now without me and Greg Doucette getting fucking tagged. It's kind of funny now. So anyways, physique is very impressive. He's transformed a significant amount and gained a decent amount of size. And there's articles, you know, all covering his physique and everyone's super hyped about it. Um, the before and after, like the guy literally... This is one of the, you know, flagship markers of transformation, too. It's when their face has literally gained muscle, too. Like, he's gained proportionally all around his physique. is just totally transformed to the point where you even wonder, is this the same dude? Like, you would not recognize him. Here he is here. And, you know, again, it doesn't look like a steroid body. You could certainly achieve this naturally. Like, this is nothing insane. In fact, you would argue that there's no fucking way this guy's on gear. However, the difference before and after... In such a condensed time frame, this is the thing that makes it questionable. Now, we obviously saw the uh, celebration that kind of confirms that that shot with the trophy isn't just like a Photoshop pick. It's actually fairly representative of what he actually looks like from what we can tell. You know, like we see this shot here. And in this shot, he is uh, like a live screenshot of his physique. And he's got the ab cuts in and he's, you know, sporting more mass than he otherwise has... At any time, the before and after is just fucking ridiculous, dude. Like, this is a, like, multiple years of work somehow condensed into a few months. Now everyone wants to harp on the fact that this league has such strict drug testing, which we're going to get into soon, which, you know, obviously has some implications in terms of if this is doable or not. Like, can you, you know, with such strict testing, can you even do steroids? Or is he just, you know, putting the nose to the grindstone, getting on the diet and getting on the training, whereas before he's just been lackluster in those areas for almost a decade prior. That's what we're going to get into. So looks like Leon Goretzka took whatever they gave Cap Captain America, Super Soldier Serum. Uh, what did you achieve during lockdown? Uh, let's see what else. Seriously, that dude is jacked. He and, Ad <laughs> he and Adama got the same trainer. The same trainer who makes them not do weights. No, I don't do weights. I don't do weights. Rumor has it they train their trainer. <laughs> this is a good gif. Banger during medicals, lol. Super soldier gif. Gym life gif. Let's see. I think Lewandowski's bulked up a bit too, unless it was Photoshop. Haven't seen the picture again. Uh, let's see. <laughs> That's a different person. Some of these tweets are so fucking funny. Beast mode. Hard, hard work pays off. Leon Goretzka. What the fuck are they feeding him down there in Germany? <laughs> First picture is from August 2018. Oh, is that the case? Maybe. But still, you can't deny that this guy looks substantially different than he did earlier this year. Like, no matter how far you dig, like, this guy has made a 
impressive transformation. So many people here that have never been in the gym in their life, let alone research gear, man lives at 10% body fat and has access to the best facilities and trainers in the world. Because we all know the best trainers in the world are always the most you know, reputable guys. It's so hard to find a guy who knows how to tell you to eat chicken, rice, and broccoli, right guys? So many times people want to say, oh, you know, this guy has access to the top trainers, the top diet, the top blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's not that hard to create a decent diet model. And frankly, some of the top trainers in the world are the ones that are using outdated literature to provide micronutrient deficient diet models. Like you have actors who are getting paid more than these soccer players to do movie roles and they're getting <laughs> prescribed diets of chicken, rice, and broccoli to literally prepare to play a superhero. Brown rice, grilled chicken, broccoli, a gallon and a half of water a day. So if those guys have the literal cream of the crop, best trainers, best nutritionists, and they're getting told to eat chicken, rice, and broccoli six times a day, do you really expect that just because this guy is a football star that he is potentially not going to have the same level of trainer who might give him the same kind of thing? And even above and beyond that, like it really doesn't take a qualified individual to tell you how to eat a fucking carrot or a pepper or <laughs> some sort of mixture of greens or whatever to hit your micronutrient needs or how to hit your mineral and electrolyte needs. Like it's really not that difficult. It's not like there's some superfoods that these guys have access to that the rest of us don't. So that is always a terrible excuse in my opinion for why a guy's sudden transformation occurred in a matter of 8 to 12 weeks. LOL, Goretzka doesn't look nearly as buff as you. He was skinny as fuck and has had like six cardios per week plus the actual gaming. You're telling us it's completely normal to put on so much pure muscle in 12 months under those conditions? I would agree, man. Like, how common is it for a guy to be training for years prior? Like, even after his injuries, there's footage of him in the gym. Granted, some of this was rehabilitation, but it's not hard to find footage of him in the gym, putting in work, squatting, doing heavy compound movements. This guy gets in the gym and tries to pack on size, and he has for many years prior. It's not like he just goes into the gym and gets under the squat rack and doesn't put on muscle for several years and then somehow all of a sudden explodes during quarantine. Like, does it not seem like a bit too coincidental that all of a sudden during quarantine this guy blows up? Champions of Europe, new one rep max. Could you let us know your diet and exercise schedule, please? <laughs> he eats collapsing stars and benches your hopes and dreams. Uh, let's see. What else? Look at that biceps. Oh, my God. All right, calm down, buddy. What y'all feeding your players at FC Bayern? <laughs> what the fuck? Some of the shit people come up with on Twitter is so weird. Goretzka is like the Terminator. Dude's a tank. You might want to try WWE. Beefcake. When did Goretzka turn into a machine? There's a lot of less uh, accusations of gear on the uh, soccer pages. Interesting. Or the football pages. Sorry. Seriously. At Leon Goretzka. What is the secret? Must be something in the water. Trust me, man. Goretzka went from tiny to beast mode in a short time interval. Not a short period of time, a short time interval. Steve Rogers, injections. Chicken, steroids, weights, <laughs> roids. Well, these are all one-word fucking things. PEDs, trend, lockdown, Photoshop, steroids, puberty, question mark. Uh, that's funny. It's called steroids, Darren. Um, so anyway, this guy, again, like we we know he's six foot two and a half or six foot three. It's hard to fill out a frame that's that tall. And we knew this guy weighed like in the 160s a couple of years ago. And now all of a sudden, he's walking around looking like a fitness model. So what is the probability that he's natural? Knowing that he's trained prior for years, I would say low, to be honest. I would say that this transformation in the short time frame, the fact that it was done in a matter of a few months, it seems all too coincidental that it was done during quarantine. And, you know, just so happens we can't, you know test you as strictly as we need to and then all of a sudden you've blown up is that not too much of a coincidence like even when you look at let's just hypothetically say he's never done anything before and this is his first attempt at anabolics even if it was a short-term blast and then he cleared everything out of his system in time maybe he will you know shrink down a bit or whatever but you can still retain a permanent performance enhancing advantage from using gear even if it was one time so maybe he who knows what he's gonna do is he gonna continue and this is just me, you know, assuming that he did something, you know, you could argue that even if he did one thing, he may be able to retain some performance enhancing advantage for years. Like if you look at some of the most recent clinical literature, we see skeletal muscles do not undergo apoptosis during either atrophy or programmed cell death, revisiting the myonuclear my domain hypothesis. So basically, 
In this, it states that the discovery that myonuclei are retained indefinitely emphasizes the importance of exercise in early life during adolescence. Muscle growth is, is enhanced by hormones, nutrition, and a robust pool of stem cells, making it an ideal period for individuals to bank myonuclei that can be drawn upon or remain active in old age. And that's when you dig further into this, uh, into this literature, you see that. But basically what it means and what this whole abstract is alluding to here is if you take advantage of high endogenous androgen levels in your youth, you can create a bank of myonuclei that you can draw off of later in life when gaining muscle would otherwise be harder than it is when you're 21 years old or something. You had peak natural testosterone production. But the same principle extends to exogenous steroid use as a user could create a bank of myonuclei that would otherwise be impossible to produce naturally and then reap performance enhancing benefits from that myonuclei bank throughout their life, even years after they've discontinued performance enhancing drug use. So this guy, even if he did one blaster in quarantine and just like, you know, went hard as hell while they weren't able to test him, even if he shrinks back down a little bit after, I guess what it'll be, you know, remains to be seen if he'll retain all of this new muscle, even if he loses some of it, he's going to retain some performance enhancing benefit from it for years on end, potentially, even if this is a one-off blast. So as far as getting into the testing and how strict it is, you know, a lot of people, they want to think, oh, you know, the testing so strict, they do it all the time. First of all, during quarantine, I'm pretty sure nobody's getting tested the same way they normally would. This is a gaping hole of opportunity for guys to blast their faces off if they wanted to. And then above and beyond that, even if you wanted to get into the strictness of testing, this is something I'll probably delve into further with a more elaborate detail in another video. And I touched on it briefly during the Adama video, but getting your metabolites tested or getting a testosterone to epitestosterone screening, even if it's on a continuous basis and you are one of the randomly selected players during whatever time frame, it's not that hard to pass certain testing parameters that are initial screens. So there are certain compounds that can't be tested for well, like HGH to begin with. Above and beyond that though, testing for testosterone to epitestosterone ratios even if you are tested using gas chromatography with mass spectrometry, they're looking for a urinary testosterone to epitestosterone ratio. And, you know, a natural, like the, the leniency is so high. If you have a guy who has a four to one ratio, that's where the cutoff is, where they'll even test you further and go into isotope ratio, mass spectrometry, anything preceding that, that doesn't clear that cutoff, you're pretty much scot-free. And there's a lot of genetic polymorphisms that actually allow guys to get away with a decent amount of testosterone without tripping this ratio or um, tripping any of these metabolite screenings because they're only testing for synthetic anabolics as opposed to bioidentical hormones like microdoses of testosterone. And when you get into the testosterone to epitestosterone ratio cutoff, which is what one of the main screening tools is, there's a lot of leeway given, like I mentioned. And their justification for that is that there's genetic outliers that naturally endogenously have a six to one testosterone to epitestosterone ratio. So, you know, having a four to one um, is kind of like lenient enough where you're going to catch anybody who's doping. When in reality, you have individuals who are able to use upwards of like 200 to 300 milligrams a week and still not trip this ratio as long as they've timed the pharmacokinetics of their compounds properly or even if they didn't time it some of these people are still going to clear it like there was a test done in 2007 to evaluate this too what they did was two objectives of the study were to establish if injection of 3.5 milligrams per kilogram which is a lot of testosterone and anthate once per week could increase muscular strength and cycle sprint performance in three to six weeks and if the wada imposed urinary testosterone to epitestosterone ratio of four to one could identify all subjects being administered this much because you have to consider testosterone doping cannot be detected by simply measuring the levels of endogenous hormones such as androgens and biological fluids the variability in human metabolism of bioidentical androgens is simply too large. So in the anti-doping field, evidence of testosterone administration relies on confirmatory procedure that uses isotope ratio mass spectrometry, which is something that is not typically deployed until you clear this ratio, which is when they're going to dig into you further and kind of be like, oh shit, you tripped the ratio. So now we got to dig into your sample more and see if you have um testosterone derived from plant sources or from like animal derived cholesterol or something that's you know obviously human based or animal based i should say rather than from like a uh derived from a plant so in this study that 16 healthy young men were match paired and were randomly assigned in a double blind manner to get either test e or placebo and you have to keep in mind this is them trying to catch people 
intentionally pinning close to the testing time. Like this is not guys trying to, you know, avert getting caught on tests. So they basically test um, performance outcomes. And obviously expectedly, the people on gear had improved the performance metrics. Um, body mass in the urinary testosterone to epi testosterone ratio were measured at the pre week zero and post week six time points when compared with baseline one rep max bench, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see. Body mass at week six was significantly greater than at baseline the testosterone and anthate group, as you would expect. Despite the clear ergogenic effects of testosterone in as little as three weeks, four of the nine subjects in the testosterone and anthate group did not test positive to testosterone under the current urinary testosterone to epitestosterone ratio criteria. And you have to keep in mind, this criteria is still what is used to screen athletes in most sports. And this is using approximately 300 milligrams per week combined with resistance training during a 12 week administration phase. So that means a guy could be using, like even if he used, like this is a long ester too guys, an anthate. We're not talking about using, um, you could literally use testosterone suspension, have this shit cleared out of your system in time for any test. So microdosing is definitely not out of the question whatsoever. And for guys to think that just because you have a high likelihood of getting randomly screened for testing, even if you're tested, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna trip any of this stuff. Like we're using, we're talking about bioidentical hormones here. You have to dig pretty hard to actually ensure that a guy is using something that's not just clearing it out of his system because he has a non-esterified test that clears quick, microdosing it, getting all the performance enhancing benefits of it. By the time you test it, it's mostly out of his system anyways. And even if you do <laughs> catch something, it's within a very, very general and vague ratio that most people can get away with pushing the limit to very super physiologic levels. Like 300 milligrams per week is like fucking over four times what you'd naturally produce as a genetic outlier. And then above and beyond that, you can't even differentiate between endogenous androgens and bioidentical hormones that might be administered exogenously. So, and that's, you know, if, unless you really trip some test that then forces them to look into you further. So for people to assert that just because a guy is tested on a regular basis or he has, he's at risk of being tested on a regular basis, that it somehow makes them exempt from using anabolics is just ridiculous in my opinion. If you know how to leverage bioidentical hormones and understand the shortcomings of these very vague and very general and giant loophole <laughs> tests that are done to screen for this stuff, like basic metabolite screenings using gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, and looking for urinary testosterone to epitestosterone ratios and whatnot in order to even qualify you for more intense, strict testing. When you have guys who could be using stuff that clears out of your system within hours, that's the, even the tests that are evaluating long esters, you can still, <laughs> half the guys are circumventing them. And that's when you're actually trying to find guys who are cheating using long esters, which is just insane to me that people wouldn't understand that you can leverage a short acting compound to get around this stuff with relative ease. As long as you have some general guideline of the testing windows, like for example, if you have 10 players on your team being tested and then you know for the rest of the time you're not gonna be tested, you know, it's kind of obvious <laughs> who's going to be cheating and when, and you know, when you have a uh, opportunity to take advantage of it. And during quarantine, when people have all the time in the world to get away with whatever they want because nothing is going on and the world's on standstill, why would you not sauce to the gills and take advantage of it and show up and just be totally transformed. And in my opinion, that's what this guy did. I could be wrong on that, but I mean, like the difference in his physique is night and day. The guy has gone from a well-trained individual to suddenly becoming a fitness model when prior to that, with consistent training, his physique didn't look better than a guy who is like a grade 11 guy and fit in gym class, you know? Like he's gone from like a 167 pound twig to a guy who literally looks like he could be on the cover of a fitness magazine in a matter of a few months. Like if this was the span of like three years, then maybe I would say, okay, yeah, it's probably natural. He still looks natural. But guys, this guy has been well-trained for years. And all of a sudden at 25 years old, after being a pro for several years prior, this guy gains like 10 to 15 pounds of lean tissue in a matter of months. Like he's gained like one pound of lean tissue like every other day <laughs> for like a couple of months and shows up looking cranked out of his tree. So no, I don't think this was natural. And I think he probably did something during quarantine and is uh, reaping the rewards of it now. And um, that's not... Um, to, uh, throw shade at him or anything. I just, you know, people ask me for my opinion. That's what I think. I could be completely wrong. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below is this transformation natural is Leon Goretzka totally natty. And, um, if so, if you, uh, think that 
he wasn't or he was, you know, give your reason. Give your justification down below because, uh, you know, all the dialogue helps push the algorithm. So whether you are, uh, you know, agree or disagree, it doesn't really matter. It helps push the video to a new audience and it's much appreciated when you guys do that. If you want to get more deep dives into bodybuilding pharmacology, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram at more plates underscore more dates. Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support anything I'm associated with, you can check out the video description below my TRT clinic if you are seeking testosterone replacement therapy and want high quality patient care with oversight from uh, care coordinators who understand how to interpret imbalances and deficiencies in your blood work and how to uh, optimize your health. You can check that out. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. You get connected with our doctors who will uh, create individualized protocols for you based on your current needs to uh, optimize your health and performance and get you on the right track. And um, if you have a medical need for TRT or anything like that, obviously we're going to get you sorted and you can save $50 off your first treatment with the coupon code MPMD50 if you are deemed, you know, a candidate, if you medically need it or would otherwise benefit from some sort of therapeutic intervention that we offer through our clinic. I recommend you check it out if HRT in any capacity interests you. Also, if you want to support Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, my nootropic and pre-workout formulas, you can check those out. Um, the nootropics, Gorilla Mind, these are pretty much to enhance focus, productivity, creativity, get more productive work hours milked out of each day. This is what I use personally to get 14 hour work days done on a consistent basis and keep my level of productivity high. If you want to check out the pre-workout, self-explanatory what those are, just check out your current pre-workout, pull it out, compare the label to ours. Gorilla Mode Classic with the max efficacious dose of NO precursors, hyperhydrating agents, plasma expanders, and cognitive enhancing ingredients. This is pretty transparently one of the top products in the industry, in my opinion. And then we have the stimulant free formula, which is even more maxed out in the NO precursor and hyperhydrating categories with no stimulants whatsoever. So you can use it at nighttime. And when I say max efficacious dose, I literally mean max efficacious, not just the minimum amount that reaches a clinical endpoint in a study, like a six gram citrulline malate dose. I'm talking 10 grams of literal pure L-citrulline, not inflated with malic acid, like literally to the point where an extra gram would not produce any additional benefit whatsoever. Um, and then above and beyond that, we have the stim only product, which is a cost effective price point, which is basically just the cognitive elements of Gorilla Mode Classic but enhanced to an even more significant degree for you stim junkies out there and you guys who otherwise don't want to pay more for the NO precursors and the performance enhancing ingredients from the other formulas um, for the pump and whatnot and simply want the cognitive component. This is a cheaper, more cost-effective version of that. So if that interests you, check it out. Anything else I'm associated with, video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.